everybody. This is Colin Alfarani with Metal Talk TV. Today we have the great man behind the drums joining us from Sabotage, trans Severian Orchestra, and All Terrain, Mr. Jeff Plate. Hello, sir. Thank you very much. Nice intro. Uh -huh. Always Thank appreciate you. that. Thank you. Oh, good drum. Well, we need a drum intro, but that will pass. We do. Um, <laughs> so how have you been, first of all? And we got so much to to cover that I'm sure people will want to hear, but I guess we got to start with how are you doing with this lockdown? And can you tell us a little bit about your new project, All Terrain? Yes. So, well, as far as as far as the the lockdown and the in the pandemic we've been dealing with, it's mm. you know it obviously stinks. It's not yeah. a lot of fun. Um, it has definitely disrupted the world. I mean, the, the music industry yeah. is not the only industry that has, that has suffered from this, but obviously being in the music industry, you know, I know how much that has really hit and hurt a lot of people. Um, obviously, last year we had to cancel our trans Siberian Orchestra tour, yeah. which, is, which is the first time that we've ever had to cancel a show. But, you know, all things considered, I mean, myself personally, I'm doing good. My wife is good. Neither, is, mm -hmm. neither of us have gotten sick, mm -hmm. nor have our family members. But, you know, we know a lot of people that have. Yeah. Um, there's obviously been a lot of, uh, a lot, a lot of death and, uh, you know, fallout from this. So it's just been a really, really sad situation. But, but things are looking better. So we're yeah. hoping that you know, hopefully by this summer we'll be able to get back on track and and hopefully you know do some live music again at the end of the year yeah. but you know it, it, and this all kind of ties into all terrain because mm. last year when when the pandemic hit in in spring of last year mm. i was just finalizing the song for this record and yeah. all of a sudden i was in a situation where Wow, I can't really go anywhere, and I'm not going to play live, and I'm not going to do this. So now I really have the time to focus on this project, which is exactly what I did. So, so I made good use of the time, although it was a little, uh, you know, certainly not what I was hoping for. Yeah. But, uh, but it allowed me to really focus on the record and, and get the record completed, get it released, and, uh, and here we are. It's so good. Well, that's fantastic. I mean. I'm lucky I've heard the whole record for everyone listening. It's called Mother's Day by All Terrain. And I have to say, it's a great record. I really personally enjoyed it. And um, I was surprised at how uh, melodic it was. You know, I was expecting something very, very heavy and kind of modern metal, but it sounds, you know, very catchy, like a bit of sabotage. Personally, I thought a little bit of Magnum, a little bit of a few other things. So uh, are mm -hmm. they all... Well, because this is your main project, you're the driver. What do you think of that? Well, I, I, you know, it's interesting. A lot of people mention a lot of different groups. Mm. You just mentioned Magnum. That's the yeah. first time I've heard that from somebody. Oh, really? I hear a lot of Ghost. Yeah, uh, I, I hear a lot of Ghost. I hear. Uh, uh, Dream Theater and Journey mm. and Dokken, <laughs> you know, Asia, yes. I mean, yeah. it, it's kind of all over the place. The Scorpions, uh, all very, you know, nice comparisons. I, I, I appreciate them all. I was just very happy with the with the end product and, and, and how the, the members of my band really stepped up and did a fantastic job on this. Yeah. This, this is... The idea for All Terrain started many, many years ago yeah. when I first began working with Stevens, okay. uh, who vocalist for Sabotage and TSO. Yeah. And, um, so this all began back in Boston, like in the late 80s, early 90s. Mm -hmm. And Matt Leff was the uh, the guitarist. We, uh, we just wrote a lot of cool stuff. And mm -hmm. I had recorded a lot of these sessions on cassette tape years later there was just a lot of material that they hadn't yeah. been used and matt unfortunately came down with cancer we we lost him last year but before that we spoke about this material and and he kind of gave me the green light to mm. to go ahead and use some of this stuff so yeah. 
I got together with some local players, some people that I've known for years. Uh, Tommy Cook on guitar and vocals, uh, Kevin McCarthy on bass and backup vocals. This is where this project started. And I really wanted to take some of the old material and the old riffs, try to make use of them. And, you know, Tommy Cook came in on guitar and just did a great job. And the whole thing really, it started off I was a little nervous at first, to be honest. I mean, this is this is my first time doing being the leader of a project. You know, yeah. I've always been the drummer, uh, still am obviously, but this was my first time stepping out and doing the lyrics and being a songwriter and being the producer and the engineer and all of the above. So it was a little daunting at first, but but Tommy really really understood what I was looking for and what I was asking, and one thing just led to another so so as this project progressed we did we didn't really think of we want to try to sound like this mm. or we want to try to sound like that yeah we started with some riffs and built from there and the majority of the alter rain mother's day record is all original music mm. but the uh the beginning of this like i said started almost 30 years ago in a rehearsal room out in Massachusetts. And uh, and yeah, it was just very, very cool that, that uh, Tommy and Kevin were actually able to help me bring this thing to life and make it a reality. Yeah. Well, it must feel great to get it done after uh, such a long time from the original idea. Is, is it going to be, uh, do you conceive it as a one-off? or do Yes. You or something that's going to have a longer life? No, no, no. We're, we're actually working... We're we're gonna we're gonna work on a second record. I, I'm actually starting to work on that right now, getting right. vocals and some and mapping out some songs and stuff. Mm -hmm. So you know we 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 are very proud of what we've what we've accomplished. I think the response to the record has been very good. Um, so we feel like you know what we've got something pretty unique here. Mm. Let's continue this. You know let's let's stick with the same formula. Uh, as far as the writing goes, there's there's still some of the old material that mm -hmm. I want to use, and that's that's where this is going to start again. But uh, but the three of us, like I said, we we started this working on this together. Um, Colin Holloway on, mm -hmm. on vocals and guitar, and Zach Hamilton on keyboards and vocals. They came in after the three of us started working, and and here again, Colin. Talented, great singers, great musicians, and I just, I really wanted to keep this thing as close to home as possible and, and utilize, utilize the low talent that I had. Um, in the event that we can play live someday, I would, mm. it would be much easier to get this together rather than trying to fly people in from all over the place to try to do a show. Yeah. But, but regardless, everybody really stepped up, did a fantastic job. Uh, Jane Mangini on keyboards. Mm -hmm. I've known Jane for years. She's been a member of the TSL family for, for close to 20 years. And she kind of, she was the last piece to the puzzle. And the keyboards, the, the sounds, the textures, the, 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 the emotions that she brought in to this music was just, is exactly what it needed. It was the final piece to the puzzle. And, you know, that really made it really made El Terrain sound a little bit more progressive. Yeah. Also heavier in some respects, also more melodic in some respects. But you add that along with the vocals and the how rich the vocals are. Mm. You know, like I said, we're very proud of what we've done. I think we've created something that's unique. And, uh, and yeah, we're looking forward to doing another one. That's fantastic. Well, I mean, I recommend everybody who's listening to go check it out. It's uh, All Terrain. It's called Mother's Day. It's out now on Rat Pack Records. And uh, so if it's all right, I mean, that's your new project. Now, if it's cool with you, I wanted to go back through history a little bit. Sure. Uh, and thank you. Um, because as everybody knows, you've had such an incredible uh, career with uh, Sabotage and the trans Siberian Orchestra. Um, if it, I wanted to ask you, Ray, from go back to the beginning, how did it feel? Uh, because you joined Sabotage in '94, how did it feel stepping into that band and that situation?
Um, well, it was very exciting for me. I, like I mentioned, I, I had worked with Zach Stevens in Boston yeah. for close to four years in the Boston area. He, he then left, left the project I was working in to join Sabotage, mm. which obviously was such a, it was such an awesome move for him. You know, we were very, very excited. Edge of Thorns came out. I mm. remember buying the record and thinking, wow, this really sounds great. And and, yeah. and that guitar player is amazing. You know, Chris Oliva, yeah. just such an awesome guitar player. But but then then in the fall of 93, you know, Chris yeah. died in a car accident. Awesome. Yeah. I called Zach in the beginning of 1994 just to see, you know, how he was and what he was doing and yeah. And maybe did he want to try to revise the old project now that he had, you know, he got his foot was in the door. He, he, yeah. he was he was in the game now. And he said this sabotage was going to continue. Mm. A, they were going to bring uh, Alex Skolnick in yeah. to do some some lead guitar on, on the next record. And yeah, they liked the demo tapes that we did in Boston and they, they saw some pictures and said, yeah, we want to hire this guy. It was just amazing because I, I had moved back to New York uh -huh. thinking, well, you know, I gave it a shot in Boston for 10 years. I'm going to go back home. Yeah. I'm going to rethink things. I was, I was 32 yeah. years old at the time. Yeah, you yeah. know, I wasn't a kid anymore. And it's like, geez, should I go to back to college? Should I, you know, what am I going to do? And, and this phone call just completely blew me away because I had no idea yeah. that this was coming. Anyhow, what a thrill for me to be able to join Sabotage. I, I went down to Florida, met Paul O'Neill, met John Oliva, uh, met Al Skolnick and Johnny Middleton. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was such a difficult time for Sabotage, you yeah. know, obviously. John had just lost his brother. Yep. Zach was now the lead singer for yeah. Sabotage. Steve Wackholz had decided that he wanted to step out, and that's that's how I came in. And then all of a sudden, here's Skolnick playing playing guitar. It, I mean, the band was so different when I joined, yeah. and as much as I was excited, I also felt you know I really felt for these guys because mm. this was this was not easy. This was not easy for for John and Johnny, yeah. especially to carry the band on without Chris. Yeah. But uh, but yes, it all worked out. John John had actually done the drumming on the handful of Rain records, so, mm. so the recording part of that was all done. I came in for the tour. Um, yeah. You know, they really liked me and liked my playing, and I became an official member of the band. And but what a what a to be a part of, you know, from a music, I, I didn't really know much about Sabotage when I joined them. Yeah. And obviously I had to learn a lot of music when I, when it was time to go on tour, but, but just digging back into their catalog and learning some yeah. of their old material and just realizing, you know, they weren't just a metal band. They were, they were yeah. progressive. They were melodic. They, they had some really, really beautiful ballads and stuff like that. It was, it was really cool and, and it fit my style perfectly, but, um, mm. But yeah, I mean that was in 1994, 1995. We do Dead Winter Dead, and yeah. Christmas Eve series was on that record, and then everything just kind of kind of changed from there. I mean, it's been an interesting trip, nonetheless. But uh, but yeah, honestly, from the beginning, it was just such a thrill for me to finally yeah. find a home and, and become a member of a band like that. So yeah. it's very cool. It's amazing. I was watching, I mean, like you mentioned, Dead Winter Dead. That's such a fantastic album and everything, Awaken Magellan as well, everything that came right after that. And I was watching, um, I was watching a video of you guys in San Paolo Monsters of Rock 98. And it's just unbelievable. Yeah. That. Yeah. Here, here again, like I said, when, when I came into Sabotage, it was remarkable that, that Paul and John had decided to keep it going. Yeah. Um, after the handful of rain tour, Alex Skolnick had a number of different things that he was doing. 
and and I think John John and Paul decided well we want to try to find somebody who's more of a permanent mm. it can be a more of a permanent member here and this is where Chris Caffrey came back in yeah and then uh and then Paul Paul and John were were doing they were they were writing TSO ish kind of material mm. at that time you know yeah, yeah. working on working on uh, some Broadway stuff some some more theatrical stuff this is where El Petrelli came into the mm. mix. And then once El Petrelli came into the studio and I remember he sight read uh, Mozart's Figaro on guitar, he had to transcribe it as he was sight reading it. And I remember standing there watching him going, this is just amazing. This guy's and Paul, Paul was like, dude, will you join? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I want you. And uh, so Al became became the sixth member of yeah. of Sabotage at that point. But that lineup between the Dead Winter Dead tour and the Wake of Magellan tour, that lineup was just on fire. We we it's kicked cute. ass. We had we had a lot of fun. We were able to cover all the genres of Sabotage, mm. you know, from the early stuff, the real heavy stuff like from Dungeons and Sirens and all yeah, that, yeah. right up to things like Hourglass and Chance. Yeah. So, but but your comment on that show in Sao Paulo, that was that that form of sabotage. That was us, really, when we were at our peak. You know, the lineup was very strong. We were very tight, and uh, yeah, it was it was awesome to be on stage with that group. Were you surprised that that at that period that it seemed to be taking off? so much bigger in Europe and South America than it was in the back home in the States. But TSO was starting to build up in the States. Um, I mean, yeah, at the time I was surprised. And I mean, I could honestly say I was a little disappointed because I thought mm. sabotage should get more recognition in America. Yeah. But that's just kind of the way it is. I mean, yeah. you know, America doesn't really the fan base for progressive metal and progressive rock music is overseas. Yeah. I mean, it's Europe, it's England, yeah. it's South America, it's, you know, places like that. So, so that didn't really surprise me. I, I really, I was just so thrilled when we, when we played in Europe with that band, it was just awesome. I mean, every show was full, yeah. the crowd and granted, you know, we had some areas in America that, that really supported the band, but sometimes it was it was a little disappointing. Yeah. At the same time, you know, Christmas Eve Serio mm. was the vehicle for, for Paul and John to do TSO. To, Paul had been thinking of this and working on this idea for years, even prior to that. But this was such a contemporary, you know, commercial thing that happened. Yeah. And you know, for, for, for Paul and John and the management team to make a decision to, you know, you can't blame them. All of a sudden we, we had a we hit song. Yeah. To put Sabotage on Ice and move um, over but to nonetheless. PSO. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, were, we were actually doing two things at once there for a yeah, while. Yeah. And the bigger TSO got, the more time mm. needed to be focused on that and the more work needed to be done on that. So obviously sabotage, you know, we got we got we we became secondary. Yeah. You know, I guess that's a good way to put it. But uh but we still continued to to play and tour up until two thousand and two. Obviously Zach Stevens stepped out, so we yeah. brought Damon Janiah in. Yeah. Al went to Megadeth, so we had we had Jeff Waters, and then we had uh, Jack Frost playing mm -hmm. guitar at different times. But but you know what? Great run, and and for yeah. for decision to to really focus and put the priority on TSO. I mean, you can't fault Paul or John or anybody no. for that. TSO has become such a phenomenon. It's just amazing what has happened with this over the years and. You know, I, I've been there for for every note of it, and, and yeah. there's still twenty some years later, it gets bigger and better every year. It's it's just amazing. Well, I was going to ask because um, I think TSO played their what their first show in '99, and that that it's grown from that base to being a a kind of yearly phenomenon where whole families will go to gigs. Where, how has that been for you to watch that grow? Yes. 
Well, it's been awesome. And, and I always say I, I have the best seat in the house because I've, yeah. I've sat on stage. I've, I've watched it grow in front of me, around me, above me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just unbelievable what we've done. We, we started... We started with one truck yeah, with some lights in a fog machine. And now these tours consist of 20 tractor trailers selling out arenas twice a day. Uh, we have, we have two different touring groups an East yeah. and West between the two million people every year in, in of just under eight weeks. So yeah. it's, it really is just amazing to, to think of what has happened but but yeah i mean i i have been so fortunate myself and chris caffrey we mm. we have been together as as bandmates in tso east ever since yeah. the beginning of this yeah. and uh i think we're the, i think we've done every show that we've been able to do um That's so we talk about this from time to time yeah. just reminiscing about where this thing started and yeah. and you know we, we all we all we all trusted in paul but this yeah. was one of them where we were really wondering, what is he thinking, you know? And <laughs> yeah. to that man's credit, he was absolutely right. He didn't quit until this thing succeeded. And yeah. and here here we are, you know, we, we lost Paul several years ago yes. and TSO was still still on the right track and still growing every year. So it's it's just an amazing thing to be a part of. That's fantastic. Well, there was another gig I wanted to ask you um, specifically about, which was one I think that people, I don't know, metalheads, whatever you want to call them, around the whole world were waiting for it, which was the Vakken show in 2015, where mm. TSO and Sabotage. Um, I asked Jeff Scott Settle about that a couple of weeks ago, and Joel, uh, you know, a few people, and he said it was, you know, unlike anything he'd ever seen. So I'd like to ask you about that. Um, so Paul O'Neill he had always talked about he wanted to have TSO East yeah. and TSO West performing at the same time. And we were thinking, how is that ever going to happen? You yeah. know, I mean, just just logistically and realistically, it doesn't even yeah. sound possible. So so they uh, they set this up with Vakken, mm. you know, for Sabotage to basically do a reunion show. Yeah. And at the same time, we were going to hand off to TSO performing on both of the main stages yeah. at the same time. Now, the, the the preparation for this, I mean, my part was was fairly simple. I had to play the drum parts. <laughs> the, the the crew and the technical aspect of this was really what was amazing because we had to we had to set up a monitoring system yeah. so both stages could actually hear each other and play with each other at the same time. Yeah, it was unbelievable. I mean, the the weather, the weather surrounding that show was like torrential rain. There was literally a foot of mud uh, on the. I've on seen the, the video where it's still coming down as you're doing, you know, it's incredible. It was it was insane. It was insane, but but we pulled it off, and yeah, you know, I was so proud of Paul for for actually doing this. He he put so much energy and effort, and honestly, you know money i mean just just to think about yeah. the, the the idea of these two huge bands yeah. we brought in extra production and every his whole thing was he wanted to put on an amazing show something that was never done before yeah and he accomplished it i mean when we yeah. were done with that show we were probably we were thrilled but everybody was so relieved because yeah. if anything had gone wrong in the monitoring aspect of this it would have just wrecked the whole thing yeah but but these guys pulled it up they you know they pulled it off yeah. and and paul paul was <laughs> paul was just so happy with the end result that i was so happy for him so it was very cool that's fantastic well i was watching um i was watching uh what's uploaded on youtube some of the you know the highlights of it it's just incredible seeing you and the whole band play those songs again to people you know in that environment and it kind of it makes me want to ask you because there's been a lot of rumblings and a lot of talk from a few different people um so i just come out have to ask you what's the future of sabotage if there is one well obviously yeah. when when paul o'neill died several years ago yeah it really disrupted everything 
Yeah. Um, you know, it disrupted TSO. It was, yeah. and we're still, we're still figuring this out. So here, here's my, my response mm. to this. Mm. When I joined Sabotage in 1994, yeah. I was invited into the world of Paul O'Neill and John Oliva. Yeah. And, and I've always respected that. Yeah. Now these decisions are up to John Oliva yeah. in, in Paul's family. Yeah. I I would certainly love to do something. I mean, I think we all would. And and I and I'm just answering the question, yeah, yeah. you know, just to be frank about it. Sure, I would love to do something. Um if we don't do anything, I'm very, very proud of what we've done up to this point and, and I have no regrets at all. Yeah. But but this final decision to do anything really comes, like I said, it comes down it to, come to John down? in yeah. Paul's family. But but I will I will say that I and I think I speak on behalf of, of the members of the band. Uh -huh. We're all very proud and very thankful that people still want to see. Obviously, have done something right. Yeah, because it seems Fans like it's still. Yeah, it seems like it's grown in your absence. Band. Almost, you know, it seems like it's grown in your absence that people still know. It's, it's kind of it's kind of dark. Yeah, that is incredible. I mean, I saw I saw a comment. So uh, yes, I, I I I think maybe. Sorry. Okay, I, I think maybe part of this is the fact that we we all still work together. We all yeah. still work together in TSO. Yeah. Uh, you know, everybody's still involved in that. So so all these years later, all of the members are still working together. So yeah. I'm sure that has a little bit of uh, intrigue to it. Yeah. But but nonetheless, you know, every year that it, uh, every year that the festival season comes around, you know, our name comes up and people yeah. start asking questions. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, a lot of times I can imagine a lot of times I, I think you get answers from people and they get they get spun a little bit and it yeah. sounds like more than it is. But like I said, if we do something, I think that'll be fantastic. Right now, I have no idea, really. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we are we are more focused on making. So she just you cut off just. And then before. we will we will continue on with. I think we're focused on the, just make. Sorry, <laughs> making sure that Trans Siberian Orchestra yeah. gets back here. Yeah, uh, we we get by this this COVID mess. Yeah, and then we can really focus on finishing some of Paul's work in the studio. And yeah, I mean you got to understand when when we lost Paul, we lost Paul, we lost the lyricist, we lost the producer, we lost the man who was who was in control of everything. So. Figuring out who is going to do all that is still a bit of a challenge. Yeah, but, uh, but yeah, I think there's some. I think there's some really good things coming up for us. Fingers crossed. I saw. I mean, the yes. last the, I saw the last um, comment I saw, which made me smile, was um, they asked. I think your bandmate Chris Caffrey. They asked him, "What do you think about uh, the future of all these things, like TSO and Sabotage?" And he said, "Well, I think uh, Sabotage is like Haley's Comet. It might. It might come around every 10, 20, you know, 20 years." And you might see it again, you know, it'll be exciting. You never know. Yeah. You never know. I I mean, honestly, I think 2002 was the last time. Yeah. Well, aside from Vakken. Yeah, yeah. But 2002 was the last, was the last time. Yeah, last tour, last album, 20 years. Yep, yep. So, I mean, everybody's lives have changed, yeah. you know, between now and then, too. We've all got other things going on. But here again, I just, you know, our main focus is, is the Trans-Siberian Orchestra. It, it really has just become such a success and we are all part of that. Yeah. So if we can get that thing straightened out, get, get things settled there, then it may open up some room for some other things yeah. to do. But, uh, but like I said, you, you, can't, you can't look, look past just what, a, what an effect losing Paul had on everything yeah. that we do. So. So we'll keep our fingers crossed, but but like I said, we've uh, 
we're very proud of what we've accomplished. And the, and the yeah. fact that all these years later, people still want to see us, I think that's pretty cool. It is amazing. Do you have a favorite uh, Sabotage or TSO song? If you had to pick one of each, but that's impossible. Favorite to play? Well, I think for TSO, it's, you know, Christmas Eve, Sarajevo 1224. Yeah. Is, I mean, that's the song. It's that's every time that we play that live, it just electrifies the arena and it's it's unreal. Yeah. Um, 20, 25 years later, that song is still the driving force behind the Trans-Siberian Orchestra. It's it's yeah. just remarkable what's, what's happened. You know, as far as sabotage, I mean, man, yeah. I love playing sirens. Yeah. I love playing the hourglass. You know, I love playing Believe. I love, you know, it's all over the map. I mean, all yeah. that stuff is so much fun to play. It is so powerful and emotional. And, you know, like I mentioned earlier, when I, when I joined Sabotage, I wasn't aware of, that catalog. of yeah. that catalog in the variety of music that was in that catalog. Yeah. And just how good it was lyrically and, and how well it was put together. But uh, but yeah, it's it's just been a it's just been an amazing journey, so to speak. You know, Absolutely. I uh, I I wish I wish mm -hmm. I could turn back time and I wish I could have at least met Chris Oliva. You know, mm -hmm. I, I never met Chris. Yeah. I I would love to have been able to be in the band with him. I think that would have yeah. just been awesome. But uh, you know, things are things happened and and in in an ironic kind of way, it's part of what brought me into the band, you know, unfortunately. Yeah. Unfortunately and fortunately, I guess. But yeah. Uh, yeah, Chris was amazing. His his guitar work, I think he was very underrated. Yes. And uh, you know, to this day, I, I turn him on to people and they're like, who oh is that? God, yeah. This guy is out of, this is exactly. So yeah. but yeah, what a what a what a an amazing legacy and an amazing story this whole mm. thing is. It's just really amazing what the Oliva Brothers started back in the eighties has has turned into what we're doing today. It's, it's yeah. pretty remarkable. It's incredible. Well, so I guess that only leads me to ask, what are your hopes for the immediate future as far as your music and touring and just anything you want to put out there for the fans? Uh, well, with All Terrain, like I said, we are working on the second record. Mm. Uh, hopefully we can get something. It would be nice to be able to finish this up and hopefully maybe get the next one released by the end of the year yeah. or maybe the beginning of, the, of, of next year, like, like we did Mother's Day. Um, as far as live shows, obviously getting TSO back on the mm -hmm. road is, is critical. But Alta Rain, I mean, we are we will deal with that when it comes. I mean, right yeah. now we're just we're just going to focus on writing music. Yeah, I I think when when live music happens again, yeah, it's going to be so congested. I mean, there's yeah. there's so every band has been off everyone's the waiting to go. Yes, so yeah. all of a sudden these tours are going to pop up, and you've got you've got a line of bands a mile yeah. long. Yeah, just dying to get back out there on the road. So how do we fit into that? I don't know, but we'll 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 find out. And uh, I I hopefully uh, Ultra Rain when we get the next record out, it will help establish us. You know, yeah. more legitimate, create more of a face, make us more worthy of tour, and you know, that kind of thing. So so yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things in the future that I, that I'm very hopeful for. Um, it all looks good, to be honest with you. We'll, we'll get past this COVID thing, and things will open back up, and we'll be we'll be back in business. But uh, but in the meantime, write the next record. Uh, hopefully, the TSO tour gets back on on the road, and uh, yeah, we'll see what happens from there. But uh, but it's all good, man. I really appreciate you uh, taking the time to, to talk to me. And thank you. It's been yeah. a huge pleasure. It's been a huge pleasure and honor, Mr. Jeff. Boyd, thank you so much. You are welcome. We have to do more